Thank you, Jivan. Uh, good evening, friends. Uh, respected uh, Dr. Arnesat, uh, my senior colleagues, and all VIPNs. <coughs> and also the staff of uh, this hotel. It's a great gathering today in Pune. And uh, I must congratulate Dr. Ire and the team uh, doing this event in very, very short time and very successfully. And also the team and also the VIP, all the VIPs uh, taking this uh, get together in a spirit. Phil, uh, I feel this is a great gathering of uh, 150 plus or maybe 150 about uh, VIPs here. Indicates that VIPs or the veterinarians are socially responsible Indian citizens. And I think that is the one of the essence of the entrepreneurship. Okay, uh, this is what uh, I wanted to start with the entrepreneurship. And the entrepreneurship is everything, everybody who adds value to our society. He may be an entrepreneur, he may be a businessman, he may be a, uh, he or she may be a housewife or a prime minister or a country manager or who adds the value to our society is an entrepreneur. And this is how uh, there can be a different uh, theoretical definitions of the entrepreneur. But practically, if you see uh, in our world, uh, it's like that. And uh, as far as Indians are concerned, I feel that all Indians are entrepreneur by blood, by inheritance. If you see roadside marketing, if you see achar, uh, papad, and uh, other businesses from the home, or if you see the tuitions and classes, uh, running from the home, or any, uh, many of such uh, things are done by Indians from a very, very long time. And uh, I think uh, this entrepreneurship is there in the blood of all the Indians. And uh, if you see the ancient period of the Indians, uh, there were two uh, systems, for example, uh, there are two systems which are very popular and successful in that period. Uh, if, for example, you can say the bottle system. Today we are talking about the cashless India. The bottle system was the same. And uh, the other thing is this uh, 12 Balutidars all over the going uh, from Pune to uh, all the Peshwa or uh, even the Shivaji's period is one of the example, good example, a successful example, which comes uh, to be true in that situation and very successful. And when, uh, what happened after uh, our uh, Indian uh, lost all our wars against uh, England or Britishers, our entrepreneurship has lost somewhat. Not from the blood, but they have given us a chocolate of security and converted us into the gulams, or you can say, uh, that's how we converted from entrepreneurs to a security, secured uh, type of uh, attitude uh, because of their uh, dominance in our politics. And uh, secondly, there are two things what I feel the Indian philosophy of entrepreneurship is one, different from the Britishers or the Europeans or the Western cultures. The Western culture says this every time that entrepreneur says that what is in it for me. But however, in Indian philosophy, all the entrepreneurs, all the Indians say what is in it for my customers and the stakeholders. And I think that is the real success of Indian entrepreneurship. And, uh, and for that sake also, we must go for the entrepreneurship. 
internationally our intellectual power is well appreciated especially in the softwares uh, coming to the weights uh, this general uh, entrepreneurship in the indian uh, scenario okay uh, coming to the vets, the vets, I think they are legally the farmers. Because uh, during our days, I think uh, without having a farm or something like farm activities, we could not get the admissions to the veterans because of uh, some uh, good amount of addition to our score. Uh, I think in our days it was 12% or something. And so that all 100% veterinarians coming, uh, joining, uh, were all the farmers. And uh, that's why I say that we are legally the farmers, almost all of us. And uh, farmers struggle. As you know, every day we are struggling, our farmers are struggling. And uh, if you see the insults, as on today to the farmers, is not changed. And these are the instincts of us, which are driven us to a entrepreneurship things. In that it comes the hard work, it is the determination power or searching the knowledge and the innovation and the creativity. I think these are the characters what uh, came uh, to the struggle and the insults of the farmers into the veterinarians. If you go ahead and the uh, examples of the veterinarians, it is not uh, the character of veterinarians what you learn in the college or books or uh, theoretically or on the Google. But if you see the veterinarians, they are dominating all over, almost in all the fields. If you see the right form, if you see the actors, like uh, Krishna role uh, given by Bhardwaj, he is a veterinarian, and today's Sarsanyu Sankachalak Mohan Bhagwat is also a veterinarian. So, if you see the from actors to the administration, then from army to academics, then bureaucrats to businessmen, computer to anti cyber crime bureaus, or the consultancies or doctors and the distributors, entrepreneurs and extension work. I remember the extension work done by Dinesh Bosley in American Soybean Association when he was. So it is not uh, the thing that veterinarian can do, cannot do anything. They are dominating every field. If you see the farmers or a pharmacist or in the sports or as a scientist or even the lawyers. I don't know about the politics, whether any veterinarian is there in the politics. <laughs> yes, I think that is also fulfilled. Uh, so at the, I, I mean to say that veterinarians can dominate any of the field. Uh, by blood, they have inherently got the capacities to become the entrepreneurship. I mean to say that entrepreneurship is not a big task, but it is uh, the thing you have to decide. I think for the entrepreneurs, see, this is the motivation is the 1%, 99% is the hard work. And uh, for the newcomers, I uh, have some uh, things to say. I will not take much of your time. I think uh, I have another five minutes to complete it. Uh, the first of all, let us decide in uh, what business you want to go and focus on that, study on that, and you do the SWOT analysis of that business. Uh, SWOT uh, is a well-known terminology, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and the threats. I don't say that you uh, work on your strengths and the opportunities. You work on the weaknesses and the threats of the industry. You will be more successful in that one. You search the weakness of the business, for example, marketing is our weakness as of today in our industry. So you work on that, you add value to the, your products or the farmer's produce and uh, try some newer marketing policies uh, that will give uh, you more ex uh, good things 
and I would request, uh, I will suggest to work on so many things we are, we are going to be very challenging in the future. One of this is the water management, I think, in the future. It is going to create a lot of issues and who will be working on the water will be most successful. And uh, then uh, if you see, as long as human mankind is available on this earth, you can survive in any business like feed, food, fuel, or the fertilizers. I will also suggest to go into the service sector. If you see uh, what, uh, if you ask some vaccinator in that any area, you have very few people who can vaccinate in a good way. That can be a good example. Uh, I suggest to go into the vaccination uh, in the service sector. Then uh, lastly, I want to say uh, that we are from the farmer's side. Today, farmer is not happy. Farmer is not happy, and the farmer doesn't want his son to be a farmer. And uh, you can see unemployment, poverty, and sometimes you have seen the very sad suicidals from the farmers. I think considering all these things, we should design our entrepreneurship uh, so that all the farmers, along with the society, gets well beingness. With this, I think uh, uh, the entrepreneur should think of earning the money or any entrepreneur, but not uh, the making money. So that is uh, one thing uh, we should keep in the mind. And always work for good things. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.